Hello, my name is Sally Caselli. The following is a comprehensive tutorial on using Microsoft Access. During this tutorial, I will cover basic concepts related to databases and how to design and use a basic database using Access. We will start with the very basics of the application and of databases overall, and then we'll get moving into working with data in a database. The tutorial is designed to be concepts-based and simple to understand. The best way to learn is to follow the video hands-on on your computer. So let's get started. First, some general concepts related to databases and how databases work. First, we're going to start with the definition of a database. A database is a collection of data that is stored in a computer system. A database allows their users to enter, access and update and analyze their data quickly and easily. They are a powerful tool that you see them all the time. When you go to the doctor's office, when you go to the grocery store, when you go online to purchase something, all that information is usually stored in what's called a database. The easiest way to understand the database is to think of it as a collection of lists. So think of it, for example, if you're running a business, you have a list of customers, you have a list of orders from those customers, you have a list of items that you are selling to your customers or services that you're providing to your customers, and then you might have a list of invoices and other purchases from vendors and things alike. But when you put all of those lists together in a database, those lists are linked together and the information is related from one table to another. And that's partially what is referred to as a relational database. So where does Access fit into this? Microsoft Access is a relational database software program or database management system, DBMS, that runs on Windows operating system. It is used to manage data that is organized into lists, such as information about customers, products, vendors, employees, projects. So basically, Microsoft Access is a relational database management system created by Microsoft to store, organize, and manipulate data as well as to select and report on it. So some of the components, just to summarize them briefly, are tables, queries, forms, and reports. Tables, that's where the data is stored within the database. Then the queries retrieve specific data from the tables or other queries and displays only the data that you specify. Queries allow you to ask questions about the data in your tables. For example, I want just the first name, last name, and email address. Then the form is used to enter new records in a table. That's the data entry component of it. And to edit or delete existing records into the table. Usually the data is not entered directly into the table manually, but it is done through the forms. And then the reports very similar to the output, they summarize the fields or records from a table or a query in an easy to read format. For example, that would be a report that you print out, something that you print out to give to your manager for the sales of that day. Now, what does all of this look like in an actual database? Here's a really simple database that we have. We have a database called the customer sales here, and we have a bunch of tables. In this case, we have the customer table, we have the contract table, and then we have invoices. So think again about these as separate lists. So the customer table, of course, it would have the list of customers. We have here the customer ID, company, first name, last name, telephone number, street address, city, state, and so on. So those would be very similar to what we have seen in Excel. You can sort this data, you can filter it and things of that nature, but think of it just as, an, as a list. Now, besides the customers, if you're running a business, then you'd probably have different contracts or different sales. So in this case, this is another example of a table, the contacts table. If we double click on it, 
we have the contact number, the customer ID, contact amount, the date, and then the type. And then notice we have another table here called invoices. And the invoice table has the date, number, and the item, what it was for, the amount, and whether it was paid or not. So those are the tables. Again, this is where the data is stored into a database. Think of it when you hear tables, storage. The next component in a database, like I mentioned earlier, it is the queries. So if we go here, the queries, for example, are like we have the table customers. Notice we have a whole bunch of fields here. The fields are those names of the columns here. And let's say that we wanted to generate a list of only the first name, last name, and then let's say email address and some other pieces of information here. We create what's called a query and we'll learn how to create queries uh, momentarily here. So notice I have another entry here under the customer table and this is a query that we have run that I defined earlier. If I double click on it, Notice I have only the first name, last name, telephone number, and email address. So that, uh, think of it, the processing of a data based on a criteria. And this is an example of a form. The form is basically, instead of you going to the customer table, scrolling all the way to the bottom, and entering the data manually here, which is not recommended, you'd go under the customer data entry form, for example, in a form similar or nicer than this and enter the records right here. And you just basically fill in the data. In a real business, this is what the assistant would utilize for entering the data into the, into the database. And then the final component, as I mentioned earlier, it is the reports. And reports are very similar to queries, but they are just designed so that they can be printed out and that they look nicer. So these were some of the basic components of a database. The tables are where the data is stored. The queries are how the data is manipulated. Then the forms are how the data is updated and added onto. And then the reports how the data is printed out or output. Once you're in Microsoft Access, you'll notice it very similar to Microsoft Word and Excel and other applications. On the left-hand side, you'll have the recent databases or files that you have been working with. Then below, you have here the option to go ahead and open a pre-existing database. And then on the right-hand side, here we have the option to create a blank database that you will be utilizing in a moment. And then further down here, we have different templates that are available in Microsoft Access. These are pre-configured Access databases that you can utilize. We're going to utilize one of those templates very briefly just to learn a couple of the concepts, but we are actually in the next session here, we're going to learn how to design a database from scratch so that we understand how databases work, how to use Microsoft Access. So in our case here, I'm going to very briefly utilize here this database called Students. Now here's a concept that you might want to keep in mind when dealing with Microsoft Access databases. Unlike Word documents and Excel where you open a document and you create the document and then uh, you manipulate it and all that type of thing, in Microsoft Access, as soon as you choose to create a database, you have to give it a name and you, the first thing that you do is you save that database. So in our case here, we have to give it a name. Note the location where it's going to be saved and then you click on create. In this case, we're utilizing a template. So it's predefined with all the components and such. So it's slightly different or creating a database from scratch. So first thing that you're presented here is a tutorial on how to use this. Not every one of them is going to give you this option. So we're going to simply click on get started here to utilize it. Now, a couple of things here, just briefly so that we get a couple of the concepts and I will demonstrate these 
much uh, more as we get started in the next module. And typically a database has four components, just like in a computer that you have the four basic functions of a computer where you have the input, that the computer accepts input, it stores the data by storing it in the hard drive, it processes the data, and then it outputs the data. In an access databases, you have a similar concept as well. You have the tables, which serve to store the data. That's where the data is actually stored. You have the queries, which are very similar to the processing of the data on the computer. And for now, just keep those in the back of your mind. And then you have the forms in an access database as well that serve as a mechanism to enter the data into that database. And then finally, you have the fourth component here, the reports that serve for displaying the data in your database. So it's very similar to the output in your computer. So in our case here, we have this form. So if we wanted to add a new student, we simply click on new student and then we fill in the information there. You can add the picture, you can add additional information, then click on save and then new. And then you add the next student and so on. Now this window, what we are using right now, this is referred to as the form. So this serves as an input for this database. Now that data is not really stored in the form. The data is actually stored in the table here on the students table. And we'll learn more about this in the next session. So now if we look here, this is how it would be stored. So it's very similar to like an Excel spreadsheet, but it's just a bunch of tables. And typically in a Microsoft Access database or in any database, you can have two tables, three tables, hundreds of tables, or even thousands of tables. And those tables are typically linked together via what's called primary keys and foreign keys. And we'll learn about those as well. They are kind of related to one table is related to the other table via those keys. And that's where you hear about the term relational databases because the tables are linked. The other component here is the queries. The next one would be the forms that we just used a moment ago. And then if you wanted to create a report of all the students, you simply click on all students and it will display a more visually pleasant report for you to print it out. So those are some of the basic concepts using a template. So now stay tuned for the next session that we'll learn how to design our database from scratch. We'll create the first table and then start building a couple additional tables. In this session, we are going to create a database from scratch and we are going to learn about some of the various components of a Microsoft Access so we can kind of understand how the application works and where the different components are. So once we open Microsoft Access, we click here on the blank database. And like we learned earlier, the first thing that we need to do after we click on the blank database, we need to give it a name. And take note where you're saving this database. Now, as soon as you open the Access database here, what we have is very similar to Microsoft Word and Excel and other applications in Office. On the very top, we have the Quick Access Toolbar with a bunch of commonly used options. We have the File tab here, and then we have these different tabs. So Home, the most commonly used functions, very similar to other applications. Then we have here the create tab. This is to create different components related to databases. For example, creating a table, creating queries, creating forms and reports. Then we have the external data tab. This is basically for us to get data from other systems and import it and link it into a database here in Microsoft Access. And then database tools, this is another tab where we can design the database and define the relationships or define basically any tools related to the database here for whether to repair the database, to create macros or other components. Then we have here this new tab called table tools. So table tools here, this is very similar to the contextual tools in Microsoft Word or Excel, basically a new tab that shows up 
in the context of what we are doing. So right now we are creating a new table and it's giving us options for this new table. Next to it here you have also tell me what you want to do or the tell me feature. If you wanted to learn how to use Query Wizard or how to create a new form or anything like that, you simply type in there how to do that. So for example, Query Wizard, and it just basically takes you directly to that option in order to learn how to perform a specific task in Microsoft Access. And then uh, notice on the bottom here, you have a couple uh, other options and I'm not gonna take the time to tinker with those too much. It's basically the design view and the normal view and we'll cover those shortly. Now creating our first database here. Databases, as I mentioned earlier, they are designed using tables. So typically you'll have at least one or more table. So now this is our first table that we are working with and we'll give it a name shortly. So it will actually ask us to save and give a name to this table in a moment. Typically, the way tables and databases work is, is that one of the fields, by the way, these are referred to as the fields. So you'd have the ID field, the first name field, and then last name field, and so on. So the columns, we, we refer to them, where you'll hear the term field. Then you'll also hear the term record. So you'd say this is record one or record two or record. The record is, think of it as the row here. So you have more than one piece of information related to a record. So you have, for example, first name, last name, address, and so on related to that specific customer. Here, this would be the field name. So right now it says ID. So we could change that to say customer ID. The, the type here for customer ID, it typically it needs to be a number. So notice under the data type, this is an auto number. That means that when it goes to the next customer, it'll go so from customer one to number two, number three, number four automatically. The data type for each one of those fields typically has to be specified. The next one, it's asking us to what type do we want to make this next field here. So the next field here, we are going to make it text and uh, this will be first name. Then the next one, we're going to make this field type as well, short text here. And then we're going to call this last name. And then the third field, we are going to make this, let's say, the street address, and this will be text as well. The next field here, it will be city, and then the next state, and then the next one, zip. Now the zip code, we want that probably as a number field. And then the next one, you can pick whatever other field that you're going to utilize, but take note here that it can be various other fields. So it could be, for example, a date field when they signed up to be your customer and such. Or you could have an attachment for this customer. Or you could be able to post a hyperlink field as well. So in this case, we are going to create a field here for attachment. And uh, that would be, for example, for the picture for that customer or various other fields. Basically, this step, it's referred to as the designing this table. So we are defining how the fields are going to be formatted. If we are done with the design at this point, we could simply, we could do a couple of things at this stage. We could either enter the data directly from this table that we, and by the way, the data that you enter from now on, from this point on, it has to be matching the type that you defined a moment ago. For example, this, this zip code has to be a number. It can't have letters in there and things of that nature. The other thing to keep in mind is, is that the data typically, we for now we're gonna enter it here directly into the table, but typically it's not entered from the table itself. It's typically entered from the form of the database and we'll learn about this shortly as well. Let's enter uh, just one record here for the sake of testing. And then if we go to the next record, notice it entered the customer ID automatically. 
So the concepts so far that we covered in this session, keep in mind when you define those fields, you need to specify the data type and uh, it's very important to think it through as to all the fields that you want in a table when you're designing your database. So then you want to make sure that all the fields that you'd want in that particular table, they are included in there. You can add them later as well, but it creates, it causes complications. It's best to think it over initially. The other thing is, is that you need to consider categorizing the data accordingly in various categories. And then these categories, they become your tables. So for example, you want to make sure that, let's say, customer information, anything related to the customer, such as the address, the preferences, and uh, mailing address, and, uh, and that type of thing, you want to keep it in one table. Then anything related to orders, you want to keep it on the order table. Anything related to payments, you would keep it in the payments table. Anything that you want to keep related to inventory, you want to keep it in an inventory table. And even the inventory could have all kinds of subtables as well. The key there is to categorize information in major categories. Those categories become at least a table of some sort. And then you define the data type for each field here. And then you have to make sure that whatever you enter in that field, you want to make sure that it matches that type of data. Also remember, as you design your database, you need to have some kind of a key differentiator between the records in your table. So for example, if you had two customers named as Hubert Sims and such, you want to make sure that the, how do they differ? And the way to differ from one customer, from one record to another is by assigning them something unique. For example, a customer ID, a unique customer ID. And those are typically referred to, and that becomes your primary key. The primary key, again, that is what will differentiate between two records. Once we are done with designing our first table here, you'll click on close here on the top right of this table. And now it will ask us to give it a name to save the design for this table. It will actually save the design along with the data that we just entered. And now notice here under the tables list here on the left hand side, we have customers information. Now to open this up, you simply double click on it and you'll be able to view it and enter new records in there as well if you need it. To change the design, you could simply click here to add additional fields. Or another method to change the data and uh, change the design for this uh, table is also by using the design view. So notice here under the home tab, we have view and there are a couple of views. There is a, diff a data sheet view, what we currently are seeing and utilizing. And then you also have the design view. Let's click here on design view. And this is a more uh, sophisticated way. It's a little bit more complicated if you're not used to working with databases, but yet it's actually a lot more powerful and a lot more useful. So here, what you can do is basically you can modify the structure of this table. On the left hand side, you have the field name, which was the column for each column in that table that we uh, saw earlier. So we could change the names here, or we could change the data type as well. If you have a lot of data in your table and you go and uh, tinker and ma manipulate the data type, you might most likely get an error message. So keep that in mind as you design your tables to try to do it as best as possible in the beginning, whether it's the data type, the layout of the fields and such. Now from here, from the design view, like I mentioned earlier, you can change the data type. So you can say, okay, under the state, I want that instead of 255 characters, I want that to be only the two digit abbreviated version of it, or you can make it uh, 40 characters long or whatever the length of the field there. So you can define the field. You can also change the format and the mask and all kinds of default values and you can control 
all kinds of additional settings here. So I'm not going to go into the more fancier options here, but uh, for the big picture, you can change the structure from the data sheet view, or you can change it from the design view from here. Notice as well that you can change the order of those fields by holding down the mouse and you can move one field uh, above the other one as well and change the order of those fields. To add new ones, you can add them here in the bottom. And then you have to define the data type as well. So for example, this is a field for comments. So this would be long text. So you want to make sure here that uh, the user can enter uh, enough text. I believe that would be 64,000 characters that it will accept in that field when you start typing on it. Once you're done with any of the design changes, now we click on close here and it's going to save the structure. Typically this save option, it takes place only when we change the structure of it. So one of the concepts here is, is that if you change the structure of your table and the design of it, then it's going to ask you and prompt you to, to save it. However, if you're simply entering data, the data is saved automatically into your database. So that's another concept to understand when using databases. The other thing is that databases are designed to be used by multiple users at the same time. So once you have finalized your design, you can have 10 users, 15 users, 50 users, or however many users access and update the table at the same time and work on the same file, the same database at the same time. So those are some of the, the very basic concepts on getting started with an access database and an access table. Now this is not all. Uh, next we are going to enter some more data into this table and then we're going to create a query, we're going to create a form, and then we're going to create a, a, a quick report with just one table. And then furthermore, so stay tuned, we're going to create multiple tables and we're going to link those tables together and then we're going to utilize the more intermediate functions in Access Databases and using Microsoft Access. So stay tuned. In this brief video, we're going to learn how to add additional fields to a table in an Access database. And then we're going to learn how to create queries, how to create forms, and how to create a report based on a table in our database. Stay tuned. We're going to also learn later how to create multiple tables in a database and how to link those tables together and utilize additional functions in Microsoft Access. So we have our table that we designed earlier. And now we want to add, let's say, to make a small change. As I had mentioned earlier, you don't want to make too many changes after data has been entered in the table, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So to enter a new field, we could do it a couple of ways here. We could either click here on click to add and then choose a type of field that we want to add or we can go here under view and then choose the design view. So design view, it's this next one. Now we scroll all the way to the bottom here. And then let's say we want to state whether this is a new customer or not. So it's going to be a yes or no field. So we say new customer, and then we want to change this on the drop down here to be yes or no. What the system is going to do there is going to allow us to put a check mark, basically have a checkbox. Once we have to tweak that, you can add additional fields in there. By the way, you have under description in the design view, you have an area where you can actually put notes, design notes for you as a designer of this database. So you could say additionally, you can go up further for any of those fields and such. As we covered uh, very briefly in the last session, each table needs to have a primary key. And the primary key can be a number field, it can be anything, but it has to be something. Typically it's a number and an auto number, something that increases or some kind of code. 
and it is what differentiates one record from another. So if you have two people with the same name and the same address, then in order to differentiate them, the best way would be to simply assign them a new ID or to have different IDs. So the primary key typically in the database design here, since we are in this view, it's represented with this little golden key. If you wanted to change it to a different field and make that the primary key, you can. However, it has to be the right kind of field. If you changed it to this one, then that means that there can be no two people with the same name on that table. So you want to make sure that you set the primary key on the correct field. And that's why typically it's an ID or something, a number that is generated by either the system or you assign it manually, but that number has to be unique. So I'm going to make this back as the primary key. And now let's suppose that we are done with the design here. We can click on close, save the design changes. And now let's learn how to create a form. Forms typically are utilized for entering data. So you could enter the data in here, but if you have a lot of fields here or those columns and you have a lot of data, first, it would be very dangerous that, uh, to delete records that you're not supposed to delete. But secondly, it's not the most user-friendly interface to enter new data. So therefore, what we can do here is we can go under the Create tab and you want to create what's called a form. The forms, you can create them from scratch, you can design them from here, or you can use the form wizard. And I'd recommend that you utilize the form wizard. It's much simpler, much easier to do this. Go under form wizard here. And basically the way it works is that you tell the system which table you want to use. In our case, we have only one table here. So then you pick here what fields you want to include in that form. By the way, you can design multiple forms based on the same table. You're basically saying, I want to feed data only for first name, last name, and address, and you give uh, access to a specific individual to just utilize that form. While other individuals may have access to update more areas of your database. So here, we are just picking the uh, fields that we want. You can pick them one at a time, or you can simply add all the fields in one shot here by clicking on this double arrow icon and then click on next. Then you can choose how you want your form to be displayed and organized. And you can play with this on your own, but typically columnar is basically going to go up and down in the sequence, basically. Then click on next and then you give it a name. And then it says open the form to view or enter the information or open to modify the design even further. So in our case here, we are simply going to click on finish. Notice it has designed our form for us to enter the data. So notice it has this, it's displaying the first record that we had entered already in our uh, table. Now, uh, you might say, well, about this field file one, file two, file three, this is because we chose one of the fields to have attachments. And these are just the attachment fields here. Uh, also, keep in mind that you can design this form and we'll learn about changing the design of forms in a, later as well. But uh, for now, we're just learning about the basic concept of how forms work in a database and how they relate to tables. So stay tuned for the other functionality there. So in our case here, the form here serves to display information that is already stored in the tables, or it also serves for us to enter new records and create add new customers here. So if I click here, add a new blank record, we leave the customer ID alone here. And then we just fill in the information. Now notice that this, it's, it's not quite lined up properly and all that type of thing. I'll show that in a moment, how to readjust the size of those. And then you basically just fill in the information. If we go to the next record, it's basically, it's stored what we just entered. And then you can just create a new one and keep on doing this. So typically, it's the forms that your assistant is going to use to enter data and look up information. Typically, 
your users do not really need to touch the tables and entering data and such because the system will enter the data using the forms. So hopefully you get the idea there. Now, if I'm to go here to my table, by the way, you need to close any of those other things that you might have opened here in the main area. And we open the table here. Notice that I have now Jim Smith, my new customer that I entered uh, manually or that I entered through the form. So again, the forms are very similar to uh, the input function in the computer. And you utilize them to view what's stored in the table and uh, to store new data in the table. Now to modify this form, just very briefly here, you can click here under view and then choose layout view and you can kind of, kind of just simply resize this stuff if you need it to. So th this is one way to resize it or to adjust the design of it. It's somewhat simpler. The other method to modify the view of this form is by clicking here on view just like we use the design view to modify the design of the table we can use the design view to modify the design of our form here so if we click on design view now it becomes a little bit more complicated and such that's why i said that the other method was slightly simpler here is where you can change in a more precise way the design of this so here you could actually go and say instead of first name without the space there you could simply go ahead and change it put the space in there you can format that to be in bold and you could change uh, the design of those fields and such additionally from this view and it's not time for us to learn about it but if you needed to it's these second fields here the ones in white that are basically connecting so you don't want to change this wording here to put it a space that's the code that it links to the table because basically it's saying it's going to pull from that first name field on the actual table so you don't want to change these if you right click in here and unfortunately i cannot display it here for you to view it but if you go to properties in the bottom because of my recording, the way I have the recording of the screen. And notice that the control source, it says here, so it's pulling the data from the customer information table and it's pulling the from the field first name. So this is more complicated, but just for your information, you don't want to change this second area here. Then once you're all set here, we can close this, save the changes to it. And then if we go back to our form, notice first name here it's in bold so hopefully this makes sense on how the forms relate to the tables in an access database now let's uh, create a, a quick query here and let's see how queries work in a very basic way so if we go here to our table and we click on create and now we go here under the query wizard and the way queries work is basically you can connect to a table and you're saying list all the customers from that table or list only the customers from a specific zip code or a specific city or a specific state. So you're putting criteria within that query or that question. So basically, you're simply asking a question. Give me limited information based on this specific criteria. So here... Let's say we want the first name, last name, and then the street address and the city and a zip code. Then we click on next, click on next, and then it says customer information query. Click on finish, and notice we got only what we requested. So we have first name, it's listing all the customers by first name, by last name, street address, city, and zip. The concept to keep in mind here is, is that there is no data stored within this query itself. It, the data is still stored in the table. The query just stores the parameters of what our criteria is. So to run this query, all you have to do is you double click here on the query and it pulls the data right away. If we were to go and change specific data here for a specific customer, 
Let's say we had a fourth customer. And I'm entering this using the form. Now if I go and run this query, notice I have customer four listed here. So the idea is, is that you can create as many queries as you want, whatever options that you want. You know, the manager might say, I need to know how many sales you did today. So you could say, okay, give me all the customers, give me all the items that were sold, but based on a specific day of the week or such. So that's very briefly the queries. If you needed to change and uh, we'll learn how to modify the queries, so just uh, check uh, the next tutorial on customizing and working with queries in the database. Now next in this session, we are gonna learn how to create a report. Uh, reports in a database are a key element as well. It's very similar to outputting information. You want to print it out, particularly it's, uh, to organize the data in a certain way. It's very similar to queries, but the queries are displaying the data in a very Excel-like worksheet here. Uh, the reports are designed to look nicer so that you can print them out and hand them over to somebody. So to create a report, again, uh, you'd go under the Create option here, or the Create tab, and then you want to go under Reports, and my suggestion would be that you utilize the Report Wizard. So here you're picking what table you want to pull the report from. Notice that you can pull a report from queries as well. So it's, the reports are built from tables or from queries. So whenever you build a report on the query, it, the report is actually going to that query and pulling the data. So for now, we're gonna use it directly from the table. And then we say, I want the customer ID, let's say the first name, last name, and the street address and uh, whatever else that you want here, zip code and such. And then we click on next. Next, and then we can choose how to sort those customers, let's say by first name or by last name or by customer ID, and you can put different searching options here or sorting options. Click on next, click on finish. And now notice here we have the report called customer information. Notice it's slightly more visually pleasing here. And you can also adjust the design of this very similar to how we did earlier for other components here. So we can go and adjust the design by going to the layout view and then resize those fields accordingly. Now, typically the, the numbers here, this number sign, that means that it does not fit in that field. So you need to still resize this. Or the other method here to, to adjust the design of this is by going here under view and then go under design view. So again, the concept is whether you want to change the design of the tables, the forms, or the queries or reports, you have the different views that you can change the design of them. And particularly, you want to use the design view for designing any of those components of the database. Now, when we are done with this report, we close it. Since we tinkered with the design here, just click on Save to save it. Close the other elements as well. And then go here under Customer Information. This is our report, and that's the data that it's pulling from the table here. So hopefully all this makes sense in how a database or a very basic database with one table works and how the various elements of the database, particularly those key four components, there are other components that you add as well, such as macros and things of that nature, but these are the main key components of a database that you utilize typically. Now in this session, we are gonna learn how to create additional tables in our Microsoft Access database. Typically, an Access database or any database out there will have more than one table. And you can have hundreds and thousands of tables depending on how big your database is. For this tutorial, you should have access to a link to download the working files. 
the working file is a zip file here and what you need to do is you need to double click on it after you have downloaded it and then you want to click on extract all once you extract them all take note where it's going to extract this stuff click on extract here and then you'll see three files in there so we'll utilize those three files to build an access database or to basically build three additional tables by importing the data from those files. In order for us to get a better understanding of how Microsoft Access works, if we had to enter the data manually, it would take us a very long time. So we're going to build three tables. One of them is going to be based on customers, like the contact information for our customers. The next one is listing the contracts for those customers. And then a third table is going to be the invoices. So stay tuned how we do this with the next session here. Keep in mind that this data, it's two of those pieces of data are in Microsoft Excel. So it looks like this. And you can have that data in Microsoft Excel already in a system of some sort. So basically we have the customer, the company, first name, last name, and the information related to the customer. Notice the customer ID here is a unique number. Then the next one, the contract list. Notice you have the contract number, the customer ID. You have the contract amount. It's another Excel spreadsheet. And then you also have this invoices list. And I have this on purpose here as a text file because you can import data from a CSV file or a, a comma separated values file. And this is what that would look like. So you have the different values here, the invoice, and all the fields are separated by commas. That's why it's CSV because of the comma separated values. And then notice that the each value here, it's in quotes. So we'll learn about how to import this into Microsoft Access database and create three tables from these. So in this session, we're going to learn how to create tables in an Access database by importing the data from another system. We'll import the actual data and also the design for the tables in one shot from those systems to save us time. You can import the data into an existing table in Microsoft Access as long as the fields these columns and also the data type matches from the external file with your current design in Microsoft Access. Since we are starting here, understanding the concepts here and using Microsoft Access, we're going to bring both the design because I hope you understand how to design the table and the fields and such by what we have covered so far in our tutorial. If you wanted to do this on your own and such, what you'd have to do, basically design a table, if you wanted to bring it into an existing design, you'd have to take, let's say, the customer list. And when you design your table in Microsoft Access, when you go to those fields here in the design view, those fields have to match. So you have customer ID here from your Excel file or external system. It needs to match along with the data type. And you'd have to have another field in here called company and you'd have to create that then first name last name telephone number street address all of those have to be in exactly the same order if you're going to use an existing table in microsoft access in our case we are not going to use the existing table so we're going to create a new table by importing the data from an external data file so here's how it works we go here under external data and then since we know that our data file was an Excel file, we can go here under Excel and then we go and locate that file that we extracted earlier from the working files. So we go here under Browse, go under the working files and notice we have here customer list. Click on Open and then here we want to import the source data into a new table in our current database. If we wanted to add just the data, then we'll choose the append option here to just simply add it to the existing table. You can also link it to an external table or external data there as well, but that's 
beyond the scope of this tutorial for now. So we are going to click on import data to create a new table. We click OK here and then it says show the worksheet. So this is our worksheet. This is what's on that table. Then we click on next and then this is very important. This is where a lot of users get lost. So we want to choose here the first row contains the headings. So the first row in our Excel spreadsheet had, for example, the field names, customer ID, company, field name, last name. So this is just that label. That's what we are telling the system that that's what that is. Then we click on next. And then here we say, you can now specify about each item that you're importing, select the fields below. And do you want to allow duplicates? Yes or no. Now, typically in a database, for example, for the customer ID, we don't want to allow duplicates. So you'd say no duplicates. In our case, we're just bringing this to play with so that we minimize any issues and we'll just leave it alone. Now, the data type here, it says that it's going to be short text. Typically, you want to make sure that your customer ID, it's actually a number field. So we can change that at this point and say the number, so it'll be, uh, typically it would be a double here that you choose the data type and such. For the sake of keeping it simple, I'm gonna leave this a short text. Then we click on next. Now it says, do you want to choose the primary key? Notice it's trying to create a new one for you. You could create this manually or automatically here. The system will create it for you. Or you can go and say, no, I'll use my own key because I already have the customer ID here. However, keep in mind, it cannot have two records of the, with the same customer ID. So you need to be sure that the data that you're bringing in from an external system to create this new database, it actually does not have any duplicates in it. Then we click on next here. So our name for this table, we'll call it customers. And then simply click on finish. Notice we can save the steps if we want it, but we don't really need to save at this point. We click on close. And now you have another table here. And if you double click on it, you have all of those customers. There are 38 of them that it brought from that table. Notice that the table now it has the field names on the very top here. And it also has the various fields, such as the email field and all that type of thing. If you needed to create additional fields, then you simply can go here under the home tab and you could, could go and add a new field. So if you wanted, for example, a field called comments, it's gonna add it and then you choose the type here. So we're gonna make the comments field to be a long text here. And then we close the design. And now if we go back to customers, you'll notice that you have another field called comments. So that's how you create a table by importing the data from an Excel file. Let's create another table, a contract table. So again, we go here under external data, we go under Excel, and then we choose the file that we want to import. We are actually going to get the contract list. We're going to create a new table along with a structure for that table from your external data file, from our Excel file. And then we click OK, go next here. We tell it that the first row has the actual information. Next, then the contract number. Right now we are choosing to allow duplicates, but typically you don't want to, because this is gonna be our primary key, the unique identifier for each record here. And we're gonna leave it alone for now. Then we click on next. Then you want to make sure that you're choosing your own primary key and you're making the contract number as the primary key for here. Then we click on next and then we just say this is going to be called the contacts table. Click on finish, click on close. And now if we close this, we'll have contracts and customers. And notice there are 65 contracts at this point. And then we also have the customers. Now in this next session, we're going to learn how to import data or how to create a table by importing data from a CSV file. In this session, we're going to learn how to create a third table, including the structure 
from a CSV file in Microsoft Access. So we have here this invoices list. We're going to create a table called invoices and that data we imported from some kind of system out there that's comma separated values. So to create a new table, we go here under external data and we want to import the data from a text file. So we click on next here, locate wherever our file is and notice it's under my working files and this would be also in your working files if you expanded it. We choose invoices list, we click on open, then click OK and then we want to tell the system here that this is a delimited type of uh, data file which the values are separated by a comma and you'll know that when you receive the file from whatever system there it will typically be a CSV file and we click on next and then we want to tell the system that this is a comma separated values so the values here for each column they are separated by a comma I'll go next again so we choose comma and then notice here it says first row contain the field name. So make sure you select this one. If you skipped it, go back and try to follow it. So we want comma, first row contains the field names, click on next, and then we leave these the way they are for now. Click on next, then make sure you choose your own primary key and the invoice number is gonna be the primary key. Next, and then this is gonna be invoices. And then click on finish. So now we have an additional table here in this new table. It's called invoices. Notice one key aspect here. If we go to customers, we have here customer ID. This will be our primary key for this table. So even if we went over here under design view, notice customer ID has this golden key here. So that's our unique identifier for this table. Now, if you go to another table here, so if we go, for example, to contracts, and open this up and go under design view notice that contract number is the unique identifier for this table anytime you're designing a new table that table has to have some kind of unique identifier or primary key now notice as well here that this table also has another field called customer id and the customer id here we saw it that it was the primary key for the customer's table that we saw earlier. So it was on this one. What that means is, is that for the table contracts, the primary key is contract number. That's the main differentiator. And now customer ID is what's called a foreign key. Basically, it will give us the option to link customer ID from this table to the customer's table with customer ID field. So the concept there is, is that in a database, in a relational database, the tables are linked together one to another and such using primary and foreign keys. The foreign key is the common field between two tables. It's that field that is the secondary. It's not the primary key on that second table. So for example, here we are saying we have a contract with this number but then this contract is associated with a customer of a specific number. So if we go here under, for example, customer 1105, and we go here under contracts, and we see 11005, that's saying that this contract 3033 belongs to customer 11005. The concept to remember is when you're designing this, you need to design also for foreign keys, the common field that will connect one table to the other. And we'll learn how to connect those tables in a moment here. Now, even if you went here under invoices, you'll notice that the invoices has an invoice number. That's a primary key. But then you have a contract number, which will eventually connect to the contract number here from the contracts table. And in the invoices table, so the primary key is this one, but then this is the foreign key for this table. So primary keys and foreign keys are two very important concepts that play an important role when you're designing the database because they'll need to be linked together. And that's what we'll learn in the next session here. We'll learn how to link the tables using the primary keys and the foreign keys.
In this session, I will demonstrate how to link tables in Microsoft Access Database in Access 2016, or how to define the relationships between tables in Access 2016. So a relational database like Microsoft Access 2016, it requires that the tables are linked. And typically, the key component for linking tables in a database is the proper design of the tables to start with. And typically what you want to do is that you want to have the primary keys and the foreign keys properly defined in the tables. Before we, I further explain this, I'm going to clean up our database here. So I'm going to first delete this table that has nothing to do with what we are planning to do in the next couple minutes here. I'm going to delete these queries as well. By the way, you don't want to do this on a real database unless you're sure that you want to delete this. And at this point, we have three tables. So we have the customers table, we have the invoices table and the contracts table. To learn how we did this, uh, please refer to the previous tutorial. We have the primary key for customer ID. This is the primary key for this table. And then under contracts, we have the primary key being the contract number. And then the foreign key, it's the customer ID, which is supposed to match with the customer ID, which is the primary key on the customer's table. And then the same way under invoices, we have the invoice number which is the primary key for the invoices table, but then the contract number, which is the foreign key in this case, goes to match with the primary key of the contracts table. So as a design of the database, you need to factor in and plan on what the foreign keys are gonna be and how the tables are gonna be linking with one another when it comes time to link them. And this has to be done during the design process. Now at this stage, we need to close the tables and then the next thing that we need to do here is we need to go here under table tools and then we're going to define the relationships so we go here under relations and then we choose to add the customers table we choose to add the contracts table and then the invoices table and then close this now notice you can even organize them any way you want here you want to organize them fairly logically if you can so that you see the structure depending on how you organized your database. To link those tables together, notice we have here customer ID from the customers table and we have the foreign key here under contracts for the contracts table. So what you do is you click on customer ID from the main table and you drag it and you hold the mouse directly on customer ID on the contracts table here. And then you let it go. Now at this point, notice it's saying it's gonna use the customers table linking to customer ID in the contracts table. It's gonna be a relationship of one to many. What that means is, is that you can have one customer with multiple contracts. And that's hopefully what you want. If you have a small business, you want multiple contracts from the same customer. You could also enable here what's called referential integrity. I'm not gonna check it for now to keep this simple, but that means that if you deleted a customer, you're probably never gonna have that customer again, then you want to delete also their contracts. That's what their referential integrity is. It's gonna do a cascade update and cascade delete. If you remove the main source, it's gonna remove the items that follow with it. If a student drops from college, you want to drop also the courses and things of that nature. Then here we click on create and notice that you have a line between the two. The next thing that you want to do then is notice now we have the contracts, primary key here, could link with the foreign key from the invoices table. So we want to say from invoices here, we want to drag this to the foreign key from the invoices table. Again, the same idea, contract number to contract number, one to many relationships. That means that you can have multiple invoices for the same contract. That's what that means. And by the way, you can move this however it makes most sense to you. If for some reason, you chose the wrong thing. Notice that they have to match here. Customer ID has to be under customer ID. It can be linked to a different field. 
if for some reason you had it improperly matched there, you can right click so or select it once and then you can choose either edit relationship or simply delete. And then if you want to delete it, you say yes and then now it's disconnected. And then you can redo it again. So you just drag here customer ID to customer ID and then click on create again and now you'd have it the way you wanted it. Once you're all set with this, you need to click on close and that's where the system is going to save these links between the tables because unless these tables are linked together, we cannot get data from one table to the other. And when we link these tables through this relationship that we can actually go and say, I want, for example, a query here or a report of some sort that I want the first name, last name, and then I want the contract number, and then I want the amount and the date and the contract type. That's when you can kind of cross and pull the data from multiple systems. Then we click here on close, and then it's gonna ask us to save the relationship here. We say yes, and now the relationship has been defined, and now we can actually create queries, we can create reports, we can create forms to pull data from multiple tables here. So this is where the beauty of Microsoft Access actually takes place. Let's very briefly learn, just for the sake of testing at this point, how to create a quick query on pulling data from two or more tables just before I finish this section so that you get an understanding of how the relationship connection here between the tables, what the advantage is. So if we were to look here at customers, notice I have the customers table, but I don't really have any contract information for this customers table. And if I go to contracts, I have only contract information, but I don't really have any customer information other than this ID. So now what we want to do is we want to pull the customer information and the contract information and have it displayed a certain way. So here's how it works. You go here under create, and then you go under query wizard, and then we click on OK. And then we want to pull here first from the table customers. Notice that we have three choices where we can choose from. So we choose customers. And then now it's just a matter of whatever we want here. So we say, I want the first name, the last name. And then let's say I'm interested now from that table, I'm interested on only these two fields. The next thing that I want is I want to go under contracts and then I want to pull here the contract number. I want to pull the contract amount. I don't care for the customer ID because I know I have their first and last name already. And then I want to see the date and the type of the contract. So notice it's about six fields here from two tables. Now I click on next and then click on next again. And now we give it a meaningful name. So whenever you're defining the queries, you want to define it with a meaningful name. Contracts by first and last name. Click on finish. And now notice that we have a new query created and now we have the data, first name and last name and then contract number and then the amounts, the date and the type. So notice so we pulled the data from two tables. From here you can create all kinds of other things, whether it's reports or new queries or forms and we'll cover those in the next few sessions. One other thing before I finalize this session, and I should have mentioned it earlier, is, is that in order for you to link those tables correctly, you need to make sure that the fields that are going to be linked through the relationship are of the same data type. And this is where a lot of users get frustrated because this does not work. What that means is, is that on the customer's table, when you go to design your table, you need to make sure if that is a number field, if it's numbers, you need to make sure that this customer ID over here on the next table in the foreign key, it's actually a number field as well. It's the same type of field. Again, here, the contract number on this table and the contracts table, that needs to match exactly of the same data type formatting. Otherwise, they will not link and you'll get errors on your linking. And more concretely, 
you can see that in my case if I go here to design view for the customers table I have it under customer ID I have it a short text field typically it's not gonna be a short text you want that to be a number and auto number typically I'm not gonna change it right now but typically it's an auto number and needs to match number and auto number they can be used as one type of data so that's fine but you just need to be sure they match so in my case I have short text here and if I go to my next table under contracts if you look for my customer ID here it's going to be short text as well that's why I didn't run into any problems so those can be numbers or other numbers but they have to match on both corresponding tables remember that in your design and it will save you a lot of frustration so that's how defining the relationships in an access database works and it's one of the key aspects of designing a database successfully In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a compound form to input data between two or more tables in Access. So once we have linked the tables and defined the relationships in a database, then you can do a lot of wonderful things and you can enjoy working with Microsoft Access. And now we have linked those tables together and we have defined the relationships to basically create a form. Forms, they can be created either on an individual table. For example, if I go here under create and I go under form wizard here, and let's say I want customers and I want to create a new form for all my customers, click on next and then next and then next again. So there is my form for the customer. So this is a simple form in Microsoft Access. To create a compound form, and by the way, the form now has been saved here under Forms, Customers. Go under Create here, go under Form Wizard, and then we choose Customers. Let's say I want everything from my Customers table, and then I want also data from my Contracts table. And here under the Contracts, I want to make sure I have the contract number. I don't need the Customer ID because it's going to be in the Customers table. Then I want the contract amount and then the signing date and then the type as well and then click on next at this point it asks us how do you want to organize the data we want to see basically since our customers are going to have more than one contract it's a one-to-many relationship we want to organize it by customer so we have customer one and then you can see three or four contracts customer two one contract or five contracts or 15 contracts or whatever they have and then we leave everything else alone here and then click on next then here we click on next again and then we give it a name so we could actually say contracts by customer and then click on finish by the way make sure you give a meaningful name there and now at this point notice what happens here so you have the customer on the top here their customer information but then right below this customer we also have the orders or the contracts you could go and add new contracts if you wanted here so you could have and such so now for, for this customer, we have a new contract created as well. So basically, at this point, your assistant can use it to look up customers and their information, or you can use it to update the new contracts or new orders related to that customer or your customers. Notice you have also these controls here. So you can go from one customer to the next. So you go next here, and by the way, you'd have to adjust this so if you click here on customer on the customer area now we can go from one customer to the next and so on if we want to go from one order to the other and add new orders you have also those controls for this sub form this form here is a mechanism to enter new data view data you have the main form which is contracts by customer but then right below it you have 
the subform which is pulling from the contracts table. So we have the data from two tables being displayed at the same time. And then you have the, the main controls for the main table over here. And you can create new records as well if you need it by using this button right here. And then in the bottom here, you have the actual orders or the contracts for the customers. To update uh, data in here, whether you want to change to add new comments or whether you want to add new forms or new customers from here. Now remember, all the data that we enter from here, it actually goes and gets stored in the actual tables. So if we go here under customers, we should have this new customer that we just entered earlier. So that's how compound forms work and how you create them and update them and use them. In the next session, I'm going to show you how to customize the form in Microsoft Access 2016. Earlier in this uh, tutorial, I created a form called Contracts by Customer. This is what it looks like so far. And the purpose of this session is how to customize this form there are three different views for customizing anything in Microsoft Access. Here on the left-hand side, you have the layout view, and then you have also the design view. One thing that you can do definitely is um, you can customize this and make it smaller or bigger, or however you want to resize this. So let's say you want to make the text there formatted slightly different, and you have the formatting tools and basically change it however you want, very similar to Microsoft Word. Now, the next thing that you might want to do here is that you don't really need this customer ID uh, data so big and such, so you can resize it, and we are doing this by using the layout view. The next one is go through each field here and customize this to your liking. Additionally, you can change the formatting for this, so it will be a little bit easier to read. You want to make sure that you adjust only the stuff here on the left and not elsewhere. And basically, you're formatting this to whatever you want. So you're customizing it to your liking. Since we are formatting this and changing the layout view, notice that we have the form layout tools. These are the contextual tools related to this form in Microsoft Access. We have these uh, different tabs here that you can uh, change and tweak and such. But one of the th cool things here is, is that you can apply themes. Instead of you spending all afternoon tweaking this and changing this, probably the width of these fields, customize them manually here. As far as the colors and such, what you could do is you can go and simply apply one of those themes. So you pick from one of those themes here and notice it's going to change the design, whether it's the font or whether it's other components related to this form. So pick one of those themes and then further adjust it. And then notice that you have also uh, various color schemes here that you can apply. Didn't change too much, but you get the idea. And then you can apply also the different fonts as well. So that's one way to customize this. If you wanted to tinker and insert images and such, you can utilize this and you add the logos and such. And then you could click here under property sheet and this tells us where this field is linked to. It controls the linking to the table itself. So for example, right here, it says that it's linked to the comments field on the customer's table. And then notice there are lots of controls here that you can change. Typically, you don't want to tinker with this or to change this to something different because then it will break that link and then the data will not be updated. This is one way to customize this form. The next way to customize it is going into the design view. And this is another mechanism. So I'm going to save these changes first. This is a little bit more in depth. It shows the data where it's linked behind the scenes with what fields and you can line things exactly the way you want them appropriately and all that type of thing. Notice that you can change here colors and alternate rows and background image and all that type of thing and the fill and all that type of stuff. That is more advanced. You can resize stuff, move things around if you needed to. But in a nutshell, that's how you customize it. You customize it by going through these different views that we just went over here. Once you're all set with a design and such, then 
you can close your design, save the changes, and then open it up again. It should have applied the changes that we made earlier. You want to make these forms as nicely as you can so that your uh, staff that is utilizing these forms is actually using them effectively and also it's pleasant and easy for them to enter the data. Keep in mind that you can create more than one form based on the data. So if one of your assistants needs access to only a couple pieces of data here, then you create a form specifically for them. And for others, you create a more complete form and such. So hopefully that makes sense and that it was helpful. In this session, I'm going to briefly demonstrate how to search for specific records by a specific field via a form in a Microsoft Access database. So supposedly this is our form here and we have uh, contracts by customer. And now your assistant is keeping track of your customers and also keeping track of orders and such. And now a new customer called and how can she pull up the information for a new customer? So you can pull up the information by using a variety of methods here, by using any of these fields. All that the assistant would have to do is click on a field, let's say searching by customer ID. She simply needs, or he needs to simply click on the field here, click on find, and then type the customer number. So for example, 11040, then click on find next, and then notice we have that specific customer in here. The other thing that you can do or she could do it or anyone could do here is searching, let's say, by first name or by uh, some other field. So I'm going to go back here and uh, let's say by first name, you can click on the field there and then choose Michael. Find and you can have this over here as well. And there is Michael Ingram phone number and information related to that specific user. Then you can find additional ones if needed as well. So notice there are two records with that. You can also filter the records by a specific field. So let's say you wanted all the records to be displayed, the customers that start with the name, first name Michael. So you can select it here and go under filter and then Notice you have all the different options here. So you can simply uncheck them all and then pick what you want here. So let's say Michael. And unfortunately, it's beyond the recording area here, but uh, you can you get the idea. It's going to be Michael or whatever. But let's say Jessica here. I'm not sure that there is more than one Jessica, but let's say Jessica and John. And then I'm going to uncheck Michael here. Now notice there are three filtered results that showed up here and we can go from one to the other to the other. So there were two customers with the name John here. Keep in mind whenever you have filtered stuff, it's going to display only what you filtered by. And then this field right here where it says filtered, it's going to be highlighted there. You can do that with any of those fields by either searching and finding records from up here or by filtering from this option over here. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to create queries from multiple tables in an access database. We'll create those queries using the query wizard. And then in the next session, we are going to do the advanced query method. In order for us to create queries from multiple tables, we need to first make sure that the, the tables have been linked via these relationships here. So you can check that from the database tools and then relationships, and you should see these links. And notice here that we have the customers table, which is linked to the contracts table. So let's say that we want to, to create a listing or a query as the technical term is of the customer ID, the first name, last name, street address, and then the city zip state. 
And then we want to also list the contract information for these customers. So here's how we do that. We'll close this first. And now we go here under create and then we go under query wizard and then click on OK. And then we are going to go first to customers. We're going to pick customer ID, first name, last name, state address, city, zips. And then we go to the next table. Here we go under contracts and then we'll pick up the contract number and then the amount, date and type. Then we click on next and then click on next again. And then here we could have some kind of meaningful name and then finish. Notice at this point, we have the list with the data that we requested, customer, first name, last name, and such. And the data has been pulled from both tables. So that is creating a query using the query wizard. You could do also the similar thing as well. If we save this, now we can go and create one for invoices. So let's say we want to see the contracts and how many invoices uh, remain to be paid. So we go here under query wizard and then go under simple query wizard again. And we can do this with two other tables. So we can go under contracts. We can get the contract number. And then we can go under invoices and then pick the invoice number, the date, and whether it was paid or not, and then next, and then give it a meaningful name, click on finish. And here we have the contract number, the customer ID, the contract amount, date, the type, the invoice specific number, the date that the invoice was issued, and whether the invoice was paid. So next we are going to learn how to utilize the advanced queries in a database. In this session, I'm going to briefly demonstrate how to utilize the query design in Access 2016. So far in our Access tutorial, we have learned how to use the query wizard in defining and designing a query. But in most cases in Access 2016 and previous versions of Access, a more effective way to utilize queries and design queries is to use a query design. The way that works is that uh, instead of you going through step by step and adding specific fields in a query, you can actually design this query using this method. So to utilize the query design, we click here on query design icon. And then the big idea here is, is that you pick the tables that you want to work with initially. So in our case here, the tables have been linked by using the relationship module that we saw earlier. And uh, now we'll pick the tables that we want to utilize and then click on OK. Typically, the relationship looks like this. So we have customers, then we have contracts and we have invoices. The way it works is, is that you have these tables here with all the different fields from each table. And you pick specific fields from each table and you're creating a new query. So for example, we want here first name, last name, and let's say the invoice number. And typically you can either double click on these fields that you want to add to the query down below, or you can simply drag these fields down here like we did a moment ago. If you double click on this asterisk sign, it will insert all the fields that are part of that table. Now here we want, for example, the, the invoice number, the contract number, and I'm double clicking at this point, the item and the amount. And then we want also whether it was paid or not. Now let's assume that these are the fields that we want in our case. Now you can run this and see what it looks like. Notice you have the first name, last name, Actually, they are kind of backwards. You can readjust that. We can go back and readjust it. And we have invoices paid or not. If we want to tweak this query again, we go here under design mode and go into design view and then tweak this again. So if we wanted, for example, first name to be first, simply drag this to the left 
And once we move the fields the way we want or customize this uh, view the way we want, then we can run this again. And now notice first name is in the beginning and then you have last name and so on. So that's how you briefly utilize the query design in Microsoft Access 2016 and Access Database. Notice as well, if we go back here to the design view, you can define the sorting order. You can define specific criteria, whether the criteria is either or or different various criteria by various fields here. And that's what we'll learn next. And before I finalize it completely here, notice also there are additional parameters that you can utilize here, and we'll cover these shortly as well, such as the query builder and the totals field and such. In this session, I'm going to briefly demonstrate how to utilize criteria, how to define the criteria within a query in Microsoft Access 2016 using the query design. So here's how it works. Let's say we have this query here called uh, invoices and contracts. Actually, we have not named this yet. It's query number one. We go here under the query design view. And now let's say that we wanted to see, for example, only the invoices that have not been paid. If we go under the invoices table and notice here that this is a yes or no field to enter a criteria. So we see only the invoices that have not been paid. We go here under the design view. And what we want to do is here under invoices paid, notice there is an option for criteria. There is a row here that we can put a criteria for this specific field. So we want to display only the invoices that have not been paid. In that case, we want to display those that meet the criteria for no. So we simply have to put no in there and now click somewhere else outside of this area and then run this query. Now notice it's displaying only those that have not been paid. If we wanted to display the text here, whether yes or no, or invoices paid or with the wording no next to it, just to be sure, we make sure that this check mark and by the way, that should be there automatically. Make sure that it has the check mark right here. Now, if we go and run it again, notice it says invoice paid, no. And it's displaying only those. If we want to hide that field, we go back to the design view and then just take out the check mark and then run it again and it will not display it. So that's how you insert a criteria within a query using the query design. Now you can have multiple criteria as well. If we run this query right now, notice that there are invoices ranging from $1,000 to more than 30,000 here. So let's say we want to see only the invoices that have not been paid of greater than $10,000. So to insert that criteria, we go back to the query design here. And then under the amount for the specific criteria, we want to put them so the both criteria would be met. We say greater than equal 10,000. And then click anywhere outside of this field and then run this. So we are saying we want the criteria, all of these fields, plus the amount needs to be greater than or equal to 10,000. And then the invoice needs to be not paid. We run this and now notice we have all these invoices displayed. The other thing that we could do is we could sort this and we can go back here to the design view again and customize this further. So under the sorting criteria, we say we want to sort this in descending order. We want to see the largest amounts first, followed by the smallest ones. So notice we are doing three things so far. Click on run again. And now notice the $105,000 invoice comes first and then the rest are following that. Then if we go back to the design view, we can even insert as many criteria as you want. And I hope you get the idea. So you could sort, for example, by a specific zip code or by a specific city and so on. Under city, for example, if I wanted to add an additional field and I want to insert it right there, just simply drag it in there and then we could have 
various criteria. So right now I don't have any criteria by city. And if I run it, notice it's just going to display the city. But let's say that I want the city Lansing or Holland. So I want to display those two cities. Now in my case here, I can go back to the design view and I'll enter two criteria. So one of them will be Lansing. Now you have to type that correctly. And I can say or Holland. So it could be either one of them and then run them. Notice it is displaying only the city Lansing or Holland. But then notice that the criteria is not quite what we were expecting earlier. Notice that we have 2500. So it's no longer just 10,000 or more. The reason for that is because we have here in our criteria stating that the criteria could be Lansing greater than 10,000 and invoice is not paid or anything from the city called Holland. So we either have to move this up here or utilize the criteria either or that we are using earlier. But then keep in mind that it's not going to apply. So we have to put them like this with the or here and then the additional two criteria. Then we run it. And notice these are the only clients that have not paid their invoices yet with the greater than 10,000 balance and only Lansing or Holland just for those two cities. So that's how the query design works with multiple criteria within the query. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the query design and also define calculated fields or have calculated fields as part of the query design. Let's assume that we have a bunch of customers. They have not paid their invoices and we want to calculate a late fee. So part of our query, we want to display what the late fee calculation would be. So here's how we do that. We go here under the query design and then first thing we need to pick the tables that we want to utilize. So let's say we want customers, then we want contracts and then let's say we wanted the invoices. So I'm just going to list those three tables that we are utilizing at this point. But uh, in reality, I'm going to use only customers and invoices in this case. So we want the first name. I'm double clicking on them. Last name. And then let's say you wanted a street address, city, state, and zip. And then we want also the invoice number, the date, the item, the amount. And then we want whether it was paid or not. I'm going to resize this. I'm just dragging it up so we can see this a little bit easier. And now if I go and run this query, notice it's going to display the data that we picked. However, it's not filtering yet or it's not giving us only the unpaid invoices. To fix that, we go under design view again and then we go under invoices. We say not paid. So whether it was paid under the criteria, notice the criteria row here, we say no. Now, the next thing that we want to do, and by the way, if we run this again, notice it will be displayed. Now, if we go back, we want to create here a new field that will say late payment. And then part of that field, we want it to calculate what the late payment would be. So the way you do that is by clicking here on this option that is called Builder. So we want to build a new calculated field. We click on Builder. So first I selected the new field where we want to do this. And then secondly, we want to utilize the Builder function. Before we can utilize the Builder function, it's best to save this query first. So we could say, just click on the X here on the top right. And we'll say yes. Then we'll call this late fees. And then click OK. Now we go back here 
to the late fees and we run this query. Then we go under the design view. By the way, you could right click on it and choose design view as well to get to it. And then we scroll all the way to an empty new field here. And then we want to click on builder. On builder, by the way, once you save it, notice we have all these fields right here under the expression categories. That's basically telling us that these are all the fields that are being utilized as part of this query. So all that we have to do is we click on the invoice amount and double click on it. And notice it's putting it in brackets and such. And then we do the asterisk, which is the multiplication. So we want to say the amount multiplied by some kind of percentage. So you could say it's 5% late fee for any unpaid invoices past 30 days or whatever. So then you do that by times zero point or as part of your database, you could design another field in there or column to, to say late fee, like how much the late fee would be. And then in that way, you don't have to enter the 0 0.5 manually. You could just multiply the late fee, multiply it by the actual amount of the invoice. In our case, we're just going to do it this slightly manually. So we have the invoice amount times 0 0.5 and then we click on OK. You could have simply selected another field there instead of 0 0.5, like I mentioned a moment ago. Now we click OK, and then notice now it enters all kinds of codes here. Now instead of you choosing to have that as expression 1, we could have that called late fees or late fee. And then simply run this and now notice if you scroll to the right, you have here the invoice was not paid, it's $12,000 and the late fee is $600. And it has calculated this, by the way, for all the amounts. Now, if you don't want this invoice paid, no, you can just simply hide it, like and I'll show that in a moment. Let's say we want to format this in, in currency in the dollar amounts, we can do that as well. And we go back here under design view and then we want to choose to not display whether it was paid or not, just that column we want to hide it. And then the amount here, if you click on the actual field and go on the property sheet here on the top, or you could right click and choose property. And then under the format, we want to click on the drop down here and we want to choose the currency. And then you can even choose the decimal places, let's say two decimal places. And then you can close the property sheet here. Now, if you run this again, notice that the late fee will be in currency. And that's how you calculate the late fee using the query design in Microsoft Access 2016. Now we save this. And then at any point for any of the customers, as you enter and change data, this will be generated automatically. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create reports and customize reports in Microsoft Access. This process is going to start with the very basics and then we're going to move into some of the more advanced features to customizing reports in Microsoft Access. So in this case, we have a database with three tables. And uh, if you wanted to learn more as to how to work with an Access database, please refer to the previous videos on this tutorial. So we have three tables. We have a contracts table. Let's assume we have contracts for customers and we have a customers table and then we have an invoices table. So the tables look like this. Now, in our case, we also have those tables linked together, which is a common feature of an access database or any of the relational databases out there. So as such, if we go here under database tools, and then we go under relationships, 
you'll see that we have those tables linked together. And if you want to learn more about these, you can check the previous tutorials as well. And now we can create reports based on each one of those tables individually, or we can create reports by pulling data from multiple tables. For example, if we wanted customer ID from the customer's table and the first name and last name from the customer's table, then we can also pull, for example, the contact number. We can pull also the amount and the signing date and the contact type because those two tables are linked together. So let's learn how to do this. To create a report, we need to go here under Create tab, and then we can click here under Reports, and notice we have this whole section with reports. So we can create using the design option, the blank report, start from scratch, or we can use the report wizard. If you're just starting with the databases, I would suggest that uh, you start with the report wizard as that is going to be the simplest way for you to learn how to do this. So we go here under report wizard and then you basically pick the first table that you want to pick the fields from. So in our case, we go to the customers table and let's say we want the first name and we want the last name and let's say we want the street address the city, zip, state, and email. So these are just some of the fields from that table. Now in our first instance here, we are going to simply create a report just from one table so that we get the idea. And then we are going to pull the data from multiple tables. So we go here under next, and then we choose how do we want to group those if we wanted to create groupings of those customers. In our case for now, we're just going to leave this alone. And then we click on next. And then here it's asking us, do we want to sort those customers? So we could technically choose to sort those by first name or by last name or by zip or any of those fields here. So we're going to just say we want to sort them by first name. Then you can also choose additional sorting criteria as well, subsequent ones. Typically, the first option here is going to take priority, then it's going to go to the second priority, and so on. So we click on Next, and then it's going to create the report here in the tabular format. And then you can also choose whether you want the orientation to be portrait or landscape. If it's a lot of fields that uh, you're going to have in your table, it's best probably to uh, choose landscape. But for now, with one of the number of fields that we have, we just can create it using the portrait view. And then we give it a name here. So just a customer list. We can call this whatever we want. Customer list. And then it's going to give us a preview of this report. We click on finish here and notice the preview has been created. So if I close it here on the right hand side, now notice under reports, I have a new customer list report. If I double click on it, notice I can see all those customers here. Now you'd say, well, it's kind of cutting here the email field on the right hand side. How can I change that? How can I customize that? We can customize any of those reports that we create a couple ways, or you can do this in a couple ways. You can either go here under view. As soon as we have selected the report here, we can click on view and you can change it to the layout view here. So that's one way to customize it. And this is under the layout view, we can go and simply resize the fields. So that's one way to do it. So notice I'm just readjusting the width of those fields. Now probably the address needs to be longer. Notice I'm going to the right here and such. The state doesn't have to be as wide. Then the zip, I can adjust this accordingly. Notice you need to adjust the labels here on the top as well. Uh, 
uh, I'm pressing here control A to select everything and we can also go here under format and we can change for example the font for this to be a smaller size so you can control how this will display by uh, utilizing or changing the font uh, visual aspects of it that's one way for you to customize this if you wanted by the way these fields here on the top of the labels to be in a different format notice i'm holding down the control key here and i'm selecting all those labels now under the format then i can go here under format and then make this bold I can choose a different font size and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now this also under the format we had this select all option that uh, I did earlier using the control A key on the keyboard. If you wanted to change the top or the heading of this you can simply go here and uh, double click on the heading and then customize this any way that you want. So that's one easy way to customize this report that we just created here. Notice that there are different designs here that you can apply as well to this report. So notice you have these new tabs here on the very top under and these are typically referred to as the contextual tools since we are uh, tinkering and uh, working here with the report module of uh, the database and uh, adjusting the layout and the design of it Notice we have this like design tab, arrange tab, format tab, and even page setup. So you can change the look and the feel of this specific report. Notice also under the design tab, you also have these design themes. So if I wanted to apply a different look and feel to this, I can apply one of those themes. Now to go back to the normal view for this report, we go here under view and then report view and notice it has changed it has been modified with the changes that we applied earlier another way to customize your report is also to utilize the design view and i'll go more in depth about this shortly here so you go here under design view after we have selected our report and this is kind of more complex and again notice you have here uh, again the same contextual tools on the very top however you can change here notice it says page header if i wanted to move this field a little bit farther to the left and adjust the width and such again these are the labels notice i can do them more precisely from here so you can adjust the width of those uh, fields here and you get the idea at this point now these would be just the labels on the top and these would be the actual fields in the bottom. Notice you can also adjust the footer what will show up as a, at the bottom of the report from here as well. So let's assume that uh, I didn't need the email field. You can simply press delete from here and delete both the label and the actual field. The bottom stuff here it's actually the field from the table that it's linking to the table and then we can close this report here on the top save the changes and now double click on the report again and notice we do not have that field for the email also if you wanted to see a preview of this you can click here on the top left and choose print preview and this is how our report will look at this point Notice you also have the footer here, the page footer. We can close the preview from here. And at this point, let's also learn how to add a field to an existing report. So let's assume that this is our report and then somehow we missed adding the email field to an existing report. Of, of course, we could create something from scratch. However, in certain cases, your report might be fairly complicated and you want to add another field or a couple fields. So here's how you add the other fields to it. You can right click on, on the report and choose design view, or you can go up here under view, under the home tab and choose design view. So you'll kind of want to do this from the design view. Now, on the right hand side or on the very top here notice how it says add existing fields so you can click here on add existing fields 
So notice we have the list of fields here from our table and we can move this a little bit and then we want to add here the email field. So we simply drag it but we need to drag it notice in this white spots here where the detail for the form is. We don't need to put it under page header we want to put it under the detail area this will be the content of our, of our report. We are kind of linking this field with the actual table from the customer's table here. So this is not the label, it's actually the data from the table. So we simply drag it and we just drop it where we want it. Then adjust the positioning of it on that report, how you want it, how wide you want it and all that type of stuff. And then notice at this stage it's not giving us the option to put this uh, the label for it because if I run this right now and I save the design notice it's not going to have the label here on the top as to what this is. We need to basically go under the design view again and, and in this case the label is right there but notice it's kind of like if we move this a little bit notice the email label it's over here to the left what you can do is you can simply click on that email label, the one that it came in or the one that it brought in, delete it, reposition your data field here, how you want it and how wide you want. And then above it, under the header area, that's where you need to create a new label for this. So to add the label on the header, what you do is you go here under the label area here on the design notice there's this icon label here and then choose where you want that label and how wide you want it and then type in their email hit enter and then reposition it the way you want it realign it same thing with the one here as well and let's go under view here and choose report view. Notice we have this email field created. If we wanted to, to change the formatting and adjust the formatting again, you can simply go under view, go under layout view, and then under design, apply a different theme or apply the theme that you had from before. Now notice in certain spots here, we have this or for this, we might still need to adjust the formatting. Notice this has a border around it, this field, so we might need to adjust the formatting for it and get rid of the border. To change the border, there are a couple ways to do that. You can either right click here under the field and notice I'm under the layout view. You can do this also from the design view. And if I go here under properties for this object. So once I go to the property sheet for this specific field, Notice here under border, it says to use a border style solid and I can change that so that it's just transparent or nothing. And then you can choose the border effect as well if you need it to. If I go here under and close this, now that border should not appear anymore. Notice it's gone. If I wanted to change the size of the font of course go back to layout view and for this field you can go under the format tab and then change the size to match the rest of the form and then if we go here under design tab again then if we go and view this report this is how it will look at this point instead of spending all this time to customize the look and feel of this uh, you can also go back here and use what's called the format painter. So you can copy the formatting of a specific cell and adjust it for other cells. So if I go back here to my layout view and I will go and undo some of those things that I had done earlier. So some of those changes. Notice right now if I go back to view here, notice I still I have my border stuff again here. Go under format painter here 
from the layout view and I can copy the formatting of an existing cell and apply it to another one. So I can go to any of these cells, go under format here, and then use this icon right here, the format painter that copies the formatting of an object and applies it to another object. So click on it and then go to the other object, any of these here and apply it. And now it's all changed automatically. So that's the easier way to do this. Then close it, click on save changes. And now you can double click on it. And this is your report. And this is the print preview of this report. So this is how you create a report. This is how you customize the report and how you remove fields from the report and also how you add additional fields to the report if you had an existing one. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a report for multiple tables in Microsoft Access. Reports are one of the most commonly used features of an Access database as a user. Most of the time, you're not going to be creating databases and you're not going to be designing them and you're not going to be creating new tables in a database, even though you can do that. However, most of the time you're going to be creating queries in a database and you're going to be creating reports from the existing data from that database. Now the reports can come in handy whether you're in a, a corporate environment where you have a corporate database or whether you have an access database, but the concept is going to be pretty much the same. Since the tables are linked typically and the linking of the tables you can see it here under the database tools and relationships we have customers customers have contracts and then for each contract there are invoices as well so it kind of all this stuff it's linked together however now in our case we can create a report from fields from the customers table for example first name last name and, and contact information and also include the contracts. So we want to see who our customers are, what contracts those customers have. So that's what we're going to learn in this session. So to create a report, you can go here under create, and then we want to go under this section here under the report section. And we want to look here under the report section. My suggestion if you're starting is to use the report wizard. So we click on that. And then we are going to pick some fields here from the customer's table. So we go, for example, if you wanted the customer ID, you can pick it as well. Click on add customer ID, first name, last name. And let's say we want just their telephone number and the email address. Notice you can pick only certain fields. Then you can also go here under the drop down before we move to the next step and we can pick from the contracts table, from another table, we can pick fields from that table as well, because those tables are linked with primary keys and foreign keys. So we go here under table, uh, contracts, and now let's say we want the contract amount and then the contract type. So that's all we want in our case. Then we click on next. Since we are using multiple tables, the system is asking us, do we want to group the report results by customer or by contracts? So in this case, uh, if you have a customer that has multiple contracts, you want all those contracts for that customer grouped together. So in my case, I'm going to choose customers and it's going to list me the customer and then a sub listing of all that customer's contracts. So that's what this is for. So you have customer up here and then the contracts will be listed right below it. Then we click here on next. And then, so what kind of levels do we want here? So we could say we want the customer ID, first name, last name, telephone, email, and then the contract information right below it. So then we click on next. And then how do you want to sort those? So we could sort those records and then you could also choose here the, uh, the report summary options 
and here you can say you want to see what the average is or what the sum of all the contracts was and all that type of stuff for each customer you can just choose here sum and the system is going to give you the total of all their reports for each customer or all of their invoices or contracts for each customer so this option is going to be available if you have numbers in there number values or amounts in there then we click on next and then it's asking us do we want to have the orientation as portrait or landscape and you can tinker with that and check it out but in our case since we do not have as many fields it's okay to have the portrait. then we click on next again and then we have to give a name for this report so in our case we'll say customers and contracts or you could say contracts by customer now you can change this later as well but it's important to give meaningful names as you start with a report then click on finish and this is how our report will look like so this is kind of a preview we need to kind of adjust it a little bit notice we have these amounts or dollar signs here and all this type of stuff so we'll need to customize this in a little bit so for now I'm going to close it here to customize this further we go under view and uh, if you wanted a preview of it at this stage you could do a preview but it's not ready yet notice it's not quite ready with all of its stuff yet we can go back here close the print preview option go under layout view and we can adjust the layout of this a little bit so notice how we have the amounts here we could actually move this farther to the left so these would be the amounts and then we can resize this field then we can go and get also the description of what the contract is and then resize that as well how we want it to look then also resize other objects that you'd like here now notice we'll assume here we know what the contracts are and such but uh, notice that they are the actual labels are here on the right hand side i'm going to delete them for now just so that for simplicity because we kind of know the amount here and also we know what the contract was now this over here this is supposed to be the total for each contract because we had chosen the totals so this you might want to move it also right below the amounts area and then you know this you have here summary for customer ID and then three records and such you could change the wording here now this it has sum you can move that field closer and instead of just sum you could say total and basically adjust the formatting any way you want uh, remember you can also apply themes for this to customize it so it looks slightly fancier without you having to waste your afternoon with this and then if this is not very useful in your case you can simply delete that specific field here and then also remember that you can apply here the formatting so let's say I wanted the formatting to be something uh, like the previous cells here to remove this border and, and notice you can go under format take the format painter apply it to another field and notice it's applied so that's an easier way to apply the formatting and again you can take the time to customize this and make it as fancy as you want of course you can also adjust the labels here on the very top you could uh, format that differently as well and let's assume that you wanted these labels here on the top you want them bold you can again format them any way you want let's say that you want it also the actual customer information just the customer data a certain font or color or whatever you could format it however you want and it would make it more visually pleasing so this is one way to customize this using the layout view so if I close this and save the changes by the way you have to save the changes in Microsoft Access only when you're changing the design of something otherwise it will save the data automatically into your tables or into your forms so now if I open this up again this is what it will look like 
if I go to the print preview, this is what it'll look like again for the print preview. Not bad, you have the customer 11 or 1115 here, whatever that number is, and notice you have all their contracts and also the total for each contract here. And you have also the footer for this page, for this report. Now, if you wanted to make this and make more changes in a granular format and such and go into more detail for tweaking the formatting of this, you can also use under, if I close here the print preview, you can use the design view. And under the design view, you can adjust here additional components. For example, the contact amount here, notice it's not fully lined up. I could adjust the size of it, I could adjust the, how much space is between the amounts and contracts and the total here, and format certain things a different way. And let's say between each customer, I wanted a little bit more space, I could adjust the spacing after each record and so on. Now, if I go and save this and run it again by double clicking on it, Notice there's a little bit more space between each customer and the total and the prior customer's information. So that's one way that you can customize this and tweak this uh, further. As you're working with the reports and such, and we learned about this a little bit in a previous video, sometimes you might want to add a new field to the report. So for example, we have this report here, but for whatever reason, we wanted to also know here what the actual contract ID is for whatever reason as part of this report. So instead of us recreating the report from scratch, we could simply add one more field to this report, to this existing report. So to add the field, you could either go here on layout view and then under this area right here, add an existing field. You could do it from here and you could choose to add. So right now it's showing us the fields from the customer table. However, we could choose all tables and we want it under the contract table and we want it, let's say the contract number. And we want that contract number at the end of the contract information area or wherever you need it. So we could drag it from here. It actually put it in the very beginning and place it basically wherever you need it, wherever you want it. I'm going to delete the little label for it in the top for now so that we keep our report slightly cleaner. Adjust the size of it accordingly how you want it. Change also the font for it. And that's one way to display it in there using the layout view. The other way to display this field in there to add this field, and this is what you'll probably use in most business environments, is by using the design view. So if I go here to my report, I'll close it for now, open up the report again, and go under view, design view, or I could right click on it and choose design view. That's another way to do it. Now at this point, notice these are my existing fields. I have uh, the contract amount, I have the contract type. However, let's assume that right uh, next to contract type, I want to add another field. In this case, I go here under add existing fields, and I could add the field the same way that I showed a moment ago, and drag contract number over here. I want to delete the label for it, unless you have a use for it at this point in this view, and probably don't need the number to be that long. And then that field at this point should have been added. So if I close it and run it, I should have the contract number at the end of each contract for each customer here. So at this point, let me explain how this data is actually linked to the, and how you control the linking of each field to the actual table. Because the data from the report is actually pulled from the tables. It's not really stored in the report. It's actually just at any time you run the report, it's querying, it's looking up the data in the table, and it's displaying whatever the criteria is that you had specified. Go here under design view. And if you go to any of these fields or the data fields here, 
so let's say contact type or contact amount and such you can select the field and then just go under the property sheet property sheet it's going to do is it's going to bring up the property details for this specific field that we just selected and then here it's telling us how it's going to format it and all that type of stuff and uh, it's the contract amount that we have selected currently it could, we could select any of the fields here we want to from this report and we could customize here any of the details how we want this to be formatted basically so this is just the formatting currently for this item so we're controlling how the formatting is going to display for that value so far however if we go here under the data tab the control source is where is this linked to it's telling us what the source of the control to what table and what field is it picking so in this case it's actually going to the contact amount from the contacts table and if you click on the drop down if for some reason you needed to link it to a different uh, field that you had selected initially in your report you could just pick it from here or if you want to link it to a completely different field that does not show up over here under the list of fields for your current report you can click on these three dots and then go under your database that you have opened and you could link it to a different field within one of your tables so for example under contracts here if i wanted to link it to the date or to another one or whatever it may be that i wanted simply select it from here and then click ok and then run the report again and it's going to link it to a different control source from a different field on that table that you select so that's how we can create a report from multiple tables and also group the results and create a calculated field for the amounts within each order for each customer and group those orders together so that's one way to do that so if you want to further customize this report and add or change the order of those fields and such you can simply drag those fields by going here to the design view So you go here under design view and let's say we wanted to change the order of those fields you can simply uh, shuffle the fields around here so this will put the contract number in the beginning you can resize this how you want it the amount now it'll be in the end also the total we'll put the total on the right hand side at this point right below the amount then you can readjust the spacing between them and now if we close it save the changes run it again notice we have the number in the beginning we have the actual contract information and then we have the amount on the right hand side if we wanted to further customize it in this case such as formatting and such we can go here under view layout view and tweak this a little bit more use a format painter and click on the destination cell and it'll apply the formatting of the previous cell that you had selected now if we close it save the changes run it again now it should have been readjusted the layout of it if you want to see a preview of it click on print preview and at this point it will show up like this of course you can customize this stuff and make it as fancy as you'd like you can make the reports very complex it's very customizable basically in this session i'm going to demonstrate how to create a query with user input and as a result of that query then we'll create also a report where the user will have to input data some kind of data and then the report will be created automatically or generated automatically so first we have here a table called contracts 
and the contacts table has notice the customer ID, amount, signing date, and such. By the way, this works the same way for multiple tables as well, as long as they are linked together. So the concept, it's the same whether we are using a table here or multiple tables. So in our case, we'll want to create a query where the user will actually have to input, let's say, the, the date, a specific date. So we'll go here under Create, go under Queries, Query Wizard, Simple Query Wizard, OK. And then we'll go under Contracts and we'll put the number, ID, amount, date, and the type. Any of the fields that you want to include. Click on Next, Next, and initially we are not inserting any criteria yet. We give it a name and then finish. At this point, notice that it ran the query with all the fields that we selected. And the query is listed down here. Now at this stage, we are going to go and change the design of this query where the user will be prompted to enter, let's say, the date. We are going to change the design. You can either do it, uh, open it up here, this query first, and then go under the Home tab, and then go under View, and go into Design View. Or you can right click and choose Design View. Now notice here, these are the fields that we have selected that we are using for our query. And notice under, there's an option here for criteria. So let's say we want the signing date. We're going to put a criteria in there where the user is actually going to input that. And the criteria, if you're going to use user input, you need to put it in brackets. and then close brackets as well. We'll close it at this point. We could, of course, run it, but we're going to close it so we save these changes. And before we run it, if we go here under Contracts, notice that we have some dates here. For example, 3-1-2010, or 2-9-2010, or 5-28-2010. So let's take note of 3-1-2010 and 5-28-2010. Now we're going to run this query that we created and notice it says enter the date this is uh, looking for that parameter so the user needs to just type 3 1 2010 and then hit OK and notice there are two records with this from that table if I go and rerun this again and let's say I do uh, now I want to run it on, on uh, 528 2010 And notice we have two more records as well. So that's how we create a query using user input or with user input. From here, you can actually create a report. So reports usually run from data based on the tables, or you can run reports from queries. So this, you're learning actually two concepts. You're learning how to run a report from a query and also that query and the report then it is going to ask for user input. So let's go under Create tab to create the report. Click on the Report Wizard and then we are going to select the query here, Contacts by Date. Pick all the fields that you want. Click on Next. Choose whether you want to do any grouping or any of that type of stuff. For now we're going to leave it the way it is. Next. You can choose to sort these by contract number or ID or however you want. Next. And then click on Next again. And then give it a name. Contracts by date in our case. And you can name these however you want. Click on Finish. Notice it's prompting us for the date. So if we say 3, 1, 2010, it should give us only those two records that match that criteria. If we wanted to run this again for another date, we can simply go here under Contracts by Date User Input and let's say 528, 2010. Click OK, and there is our data. Now, you can customize, of course, this report any way you wish to, the formatting and such. So notice we have these number field here and such. You can always customize that and choose to make that larger. 
and you can reference uh, the previous video on how to do the formatting of the reports and customizing of the reports. And probably at this point you are wondering, well, how can I specify, uh, how can I have this query so that instead of me putting 3-1-2010 date and giving me just for that specific date, can I have this query customized so I put the start date and it gives me all, and also I put the end date for a particular range and then have the system list me all those criteria. So, and that is very doable. And um, you, all you'd have to do is basically go back here to the design view and we need to tweak and change this to include the range. So we can accomplish this by uh, doing the following. So we enter the range, the starting range here. It has to be in brackets. You can have those words be whatever you want them to be. You put also the end range in brackets as well and you use the word and in capital letters now here we are saying we want anything greater or equal to the start date and anything less or equal to the end date then we save this by clicking on the save button here on the top we'll close the query and then run it again now it says enter the start date and we enter 3 1 2010 of course it has to fall within the range of data that you have in the system in your table we enter also the end date 528 2010 and notice the system displays the data that falls within those parameters we could run this for any date ranges so we could say 1 1 2010 I want to see all the contracts from uh, the January 1st and then all the way for the first six months to 6-30-2010, click OK. And notice these are all the records or all the contracts for that date range. Now you can do the same thing. You can create a report for this where you can run this report at any point. The, uh, the thing of the report or the advantage of the report is that you can make the data look nicer and such. If we go here under create and we go under reports and report wizard and we go under the contracts by date, we insert all those fields in there. I just clicked on all the fields, press next, next. We can order them by contract number or whatever there or by date, however you want them. Let's do them by date. Next, next. We give it a meaningful name, click on finish. Now this it's trying to run it at this point, so we say uh, 31 2010 to 12 31 2010. Click OK. Notice we have the data for all of that date range. Of course, you can go here and change uh, the look and feel of this, customize this report any way that you would prefer. And you can go into the edit option here under design and then view and the layout view and adjust how this is displayed. Format this any way you prefer, change the look and feel of it. Close it, saving it. And you can run this report at any point for any sales or whatever it is. And it works exactly the same way with multiple tables as well, as long as they are linked properly. So that's how you create a report based on a query with user input, whether it's single user input or multiple user input. It's one of the powerful features that most users will use in Microsoft Access from day-to-day -day tasks and business tasks. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to export data from Access into Excel. 
a lot of times in a business uh, scenario and such you can run reports you can run queries or you want to export data from your database and put it into an excel spreadsheet and then work with the data and create charts and or use it for other functions from within excel so you can do it from the tables you can do it from a query you can export the data from a query or you can export the data from a report so let's see from uh, first from a table exporting data from a table into excel we click here on the contacts table which looks like this at this point we right click on it and there's this option for export and you can choose to export it in any of those formats you could also go under external data here and choose to export from up here into excel so right click export excel and then choose the location where you want to save this and uh, how you want the formatting and the layout if you prefer click ok and you could choose to save those steps those steps by the way will show up on the external data here under the saved saved exports click close now that data should be in excel if i go here to my file manager now this i have a file here called contracts I open this file and now I can work with this any way that I prefer from Excel and of course there are two separate entities at this point so if you change something in Excel it's not going to update it in Microsoft Access so that's how you export data from a table the process is exactly the same for exporting the data from a query or from a report so for the query we run the query first so in this case i have the query here the date parameter and all that type of stuff so so this is my data and now at this point i can simply right click choose export excel choose where i want to store it give it a name press save and finish and we can do this for the contracts as well by customer same thing with the report this is our report right click choose export choose excel format choose where you want to store it notice contacts by customer report click ok and now if i go to my um, the folder where i exported this notice the data is there and this was the query that I ran earlier for the dates from January 1 to June 30th from the query. So that's how exporting data works from Microsoft Access to another system such as Microsoft Excel. It's a commonly used feature in business. In this session, I'll demonstrate how to create a mail merge using a query from Microsoft Access. In order to create a mail merge, we can either use a table in Microsoft Access, an existing table, or we could use an existing query. So in our case, we are going to first create the query, and uh, then we are going to create the mail merge. That way you learn both at the same time. So we go here under Create, go under Queries here, query wizard and then simple query OK and then we are going to go under customers and let's say we want to use a customer ID customer first name last name and then let's say the email and also let's go under the contracts table and we'll get the contact amount and then the contract type as well so we are just creating a query at this point with those fields from two tables. We click on next, click on next. We give also a name to this, call it, and then click on finish. So the data is here at this point. Now to create the mail merge, we can do this two ways. We can either create the mail merge directly from Microsoft Access, or we can go to Word first and create the mail merge from there. Or the other option would be to dump this data into Microsoft Excel and then do the mail merge from Microsoft Excel. 
So we'll basically do it from access from this point. And then I'll show you from Word as well. So if we go here to the, uh, this is our query. And then we go under external data. Now this you also can right click. So we have our query here and then we go to external data. And the other option here is to actually create a word merge. So word merge, it says you specify the table and you create a mail merge wizard through Microsoft Word. We click on Microsoft Word merge here. It says you want to link it to an existing document or do you want to create a new one? We'll just create a new one because we don't have an existing letter currently. Click OK. Now the system is going to open Microsoft Word automatically. And here at this stage, it's asking us as to what we want to do. Do we want to create letters, email messages, or envelopes and such? Once we are in Microsoft Word, here we type our letter. We could say dear and then insert field. We put first name, comma. And we basically just type our letter and then every so often in our letter we can actually in include here various fields from our access table. Basically we type the letter here with uh, incorporating the fields that we have in our access database. So here we could use their first name, last name, we could use their contact amount stated somewhere and then a contact type. If we needed more fields then we need to go and customize our query from the access database. So for now, I'm just going to put the amount and the type here. So we say thank you for partnering with us to meet your needs with the recent contract. And the computer will put the amount in there. And you could put the contact type. Of course, it has to make sense. And then you basically finish uh, typing your letter. Then we go here under the next stage here, or uh, start your document. And then we can use the current document in our case, or we could have created a, a used an existing document if you have a letter from before. Then we go select recipients. We'll use an existing list. And then we'll select the existing list here, which is basically a customer query for mail merge. So we don't really need to select the list. It's already selected because we started the mail merge from Microsoft Access. So that's how it's linked automatically there. Now here we write our letter, which we actually just did earlier. And then it says here, preview our letters. Notice dear Owen, and then contact one. And then this was the contract. And then the next step here is to complete the mail merge. So we click on complete the merge and then edit individual letters. Then click OK here. Now here we can see all the various letters from that mail merge from that specific query. Now keep in mind this, you don't need to modify. If there is something that uh, needs to be corrected and such, you need to actually go back to the database and change the information in the database and then rerun the query. The beauty of, of this stuff is, and I'm going to close this mail merge the results at this point. So I'll say, I don't need to save the results. But um, the beauty of this is that is that if I save this form, and this is the form actually that typically has the codes and all that stuff linked to the database, if I save this, And then I close Word, and then I come back here to my uh, document. So this was my letter, and two weeks have passed, or something, uh, time has passed. Now I want to rerun this again. Notice if I open it up again, it will ask me, do I want to update it for link to the access uh, query? I say yes, and now I can go ahead here and go under mailings, go under mail merge, and then uh, step by step and pretty much here I don't actually have to do them uh, step by step I could go here under finish and merge and then edit individual letters and it's going to actually 
rerun the whole query again. I know I did this fairly quickly, so you can rewind the video and see it again for your uh, benefit. But the advantage is, is that you don't have to always create a new form. You can simply save the form from Word open it up whenever you want to rerun it and it's going to pull the data directly from that query from the access database automatically for you so this was the way how to do a query from microsoft access into word the other way to do it is that you can open word first and then go to microsoft access and pull the data from a query or from a table and that will work as well so if i go here to microsoft word And I open a new document here and, I, and uh, then I go under mailings. I go under start a mail merge and I'd recommend that you use the mail merge wizard here. Then uh, start next and uh, we're going to use um, a current document here or you know just this current blank document that we have in front of us. Next here we're going to select the recipients. Now, notice it doesn't link automatically to our table into the database, so we have to actually go in and link to it. So if I click here on Browse, now I need to find my database where I have it, and double click on it, and now notice it lists all the tables and the queries. So you can actually do a mail merge from actual tables or from the queries within a database. Now I click OK here, Notice it shows all the uh, records here, including the fields that we had selected as part of that query. We could filter and sort them if we wanted to do that furthermore, but for now we're not. Then we're gonna write the letter and we say dear, and then insert field and we say first name, space, last name, and then write the letter with the various fields. So I put the amount. So basically you're just putting the actual fields that you want to use. Of course, this I'm doing this fairly quickly here for the sake of time. You could put additional comments and then you can preview those letters. So this is how it's gonna look. Thank you, dear Owen. Thank you for your contact type and such and such. Residential, number one. And, and so on and so on. Next, you click on here on complete the merge. Then you choose edit individual letters. This just gives you an idea as to what they are gonna look like. So right now we have five letters that have been generated automatically. So that's how that works. Now, the other thing that you can do is from access or, or from Word, you could do also email merges. So if I go here to my customers, you know this uh, customers table has an email field. So I could actually do an email merge for those customers and I could either create a query that includes those email fields or I could use my customer table for uh, this purpose. So if I wanted to send them contact information and all that stuff, which is in a different table, then you'll need to use a query and you need to include the email field in one of those queries. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna create a query for that at this stage, but I'm just gonna use the table customers which has already a field with email in it and will create an email merge so as so i have opened here the customers table and i click on mail merge or word merge so here's customers word merge and then it's asking us do we want to link to an existing word document or create one we want to create a new one so basically you're going to write the email in word and then it's going to use microsoft outlook to actually deliver the mail. So it's important here as well that the third piece of this puzzle is actually to use Microsoft Outlook and have Microsoft Outlook configured to be able to receive and send emails as well. So now notice Microsoft Word has been opened here in the bottom. And then we say, okay, I want to create email messages here. Then I say next here to start the document. Then it says, do you want to use the current document or do you want to use an existing document? So we'll use the current document, which is right here. Then select the recipients. The recipients, it's already linked to the customer's table in access. So we don't have to really select the customers at this point or type a new one. We'll use the existing list. Then we'll write the email message. And here we just write, dear. 
and then put their first name, last name, comma, And you're basically just picking the fields and being creative or whatever your need is to utilize those fields in your email to them. So in this case, we're going to tell them, okay, here's what we have on file with you or from you on our systems. And if you have any problems or anything like that, just let us know. So we say uh, a name, first and last name. Then we could put in there a street address. And you basically format this a little bit nicer if you'd like. You can go here under the Home tab and customize this any way you want. And so next, you click on Preview your email message. Then you complete the merge next. And then we're going to choose here Electronic Mail. So this is the difference between the Word email merge and a regular mail merge for letters. Here for the email merge, you have to click on Electronic Mail and then the other field here, the other important thing is that you have to tell the system which field actually contains the email address. So in this drop down, it has to be the field that corresponds with the email address from your access uh, table or access query. For example, here is in access, this is email. It's called email, the label on the top here. And then you type the subject line here. So this would be just like as if you were to type an individual email to somebody. That would be the subject that you want to write to them. And then the email format, uh, HTML. You want to use HTML particularly if you want to embed pictures and things of that nature as part of your uh, document here. But what we typed over here, it's going to be the body of the message that is going to be sent through email. Now, again, it's important. Uh, if I press OK here, it's actually going to open up Microsoft Outlook and it's actually going to try to send all of those emails that are in the table in the Access database. So it's going to try to email here uh, 42 customers all in one click, basically. So I'm not going to press OK here because it's not going to try to send those, but that's how this system will work for sending email messages. It's a powerful feature. Again, you can actually go then back through Microsoft Word and do the same thing like we did for the regular letters and create an email merge. You can do it either from Microsoft Access, from the table itself and initiate the email merge, or you can do this from Word, configure the, go through the steps of the mail merge, and then pull the table, pull the fields, write the email and press send from Word, and then in the sent messages in Microsoft Outlook, you'll see each individual email that was sent out. So that's how you do a mail merge and an email merge. And of course, you can also do labels if you need it to from here as well through Microsoft Access. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a switchboard or a dashboard for your database so that whenever you open your database, you'd actually, instead of having a view like this and then trying to figure out as to what is where, you'd have more of a nicer view, like a dashboard menu type of system where you'd be able to get to certain tables or certain queries or reports much easier and more user friendly. So how do we create that? Unfortunately, in Access 2016, Microsoft hid that way. So the easiest way to get to the switchboard manager is by simply going here under the Tell Me feature, which is this little box right here telling Microsoft Access what you want to do. And then you, so we go here under the Tell Me feature and we type switchboard. And then click on switchboard manager. And it says the switchboard manager was unable to find a valid switchboard for this database. Would you like to create one? 
and that is great because that's what we want to do so you click on yes and then it's going to give us a default switchboard so once it opens the default switchboard here we click on edit and then we want to add new items to this switchboard then we click on new and then here is um, one of the options or one of the menus that we can define. So let's say we wanted to update customer records. And here we go under the command, then we need to tell the system as to what we want to do. In our case, we want to open a form either in add mode or edit mode. So in our case, we want to update existing records. So we want to choose edit mode. And then we go to the form that we want to be editing. So we go under here and we choose the customer form and then click OK. Another option, so we click here on new and we choose add new customer. And then go under the switchboard, click on the form for open form in add mode. And then we go over here under customer's form as well. So now we have two of them. Then we add another command that we want as part of our dashboard. We click on new and then we let's say we want to see the contacts by date. Do we want to open a report? So you can either uh, open uh, forms or reports in this case or macros. So here we'll click on open a report and we'll change this, let's say contacts by date. And then you click on open report and then you choose a report that you want to run. Click OK and you can keep on adding more items like this as well. So we could go here and choose Then you can also choose a new item here, return, because you want to navigate back home. You choose go to the switchboard, and then the switchboard that you want to go is the default switchboard. So I close the main switchboard. Now I can go and create additional switchboard pages as well. So in this case, I want a switchboard just called reports. Click OK. And now I go into the report switchboard, I create new to add a new item, then I edit, then I edit the report, the switchboard, and I add a new item there. So let's say I want in there uh, view customers. And then open a report, pick the report that you want, and so and then keep on adding whatever components you have because sometimes in a database you'd have hundreds of reports and hundreds of queries and such and in this stuff here on the left it could get very messy so the switchboard actually helps you categorize what you want in the order that you want them presented then whenever you create another switchboard it's also important to create here a return to the main switchboard option as well so return home and then you want to go to the switchboard and you want to choose which switchboard you want to go to click OK and then close this stuff and then close it again now whenever you define the switchboard you also have to do one more thing in order to tell Microsoft Access and the database so whenever it opens which form to open so in this case we need to go to do that we need to go under the file menu we go here under options then we go under the current database and then over here where it says display right here we want to choose to display whenever you open the database you want to choose to display the switchboard then you click OK and then it says we need to close the database for this to take effect so we'll need to exit the database and now notice it presents me with the main switchboard here course we could change the colors we could make this fancier and a lot of stuff as well typically you can hide all this other stuff here on the left and uh, make it so it opens like this so basically if you wanted to add a new customer you could click on add new customer and now 
now this it takes you to your customer uh, to add the new customer if I wanted to view the contracts by date range so notice it's going to prompt me for the contracts and it's going to play me the report content that I had requested I could review also the customer report if I needed to and there it is with a single click so that's how you create the switchboard items here if you wanted to change the colors and all that type of stuff you can simply go here under view and then under either design view or the layout view you can change the theme to something more appealing to you and you could add more controls and you could add more text in here as well when you're ready and done you could put a logo if you'd prefer and all that type of stuff but basically this is a mechanism for your staff and yourself to be able to access this and in a user-friendly way if you wanted that switchboard manager tool all the time you can either use the quick the tell me feature over here or you could actually go ahead and add it over here under the quick access toolbar you can go and choose more commands and then choose to show all the commands and then scroll down here to switchboard somewhere switchboard manager and then you add it to the right then click OK and it's going to show up here on the quick access toolbar on the very top so that will display you your main switchboard where you can make edits and change stuff if you need it to do that in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to add a new field to your database or to one of the tables in your database suppose that uh, you designed your database and now all of a sudden you have a need to add an additional field for your customer table or some of the tables there so what you can do is go ahead and uh, go to the specific table and the easiest would be to go to design view here and then add a new field wherever you want that new field so for example uh, first name last name and then telephone number and such but let's say I want to also post in there a picture for this customer then under the data type what you want to uh, choose here is attachment and basically we are saying we're going to add a field called picture and this is going to be an attachment now the point the reason why I'm choosing attachment is because I have not covered the attachment option uh, earlier and this is new in, in access so once you define this then click on uh, close here for the table and save the changes we are saving the changes because we changed the design of the table if we open the customers table notice one of the fields will be attachment like it has this attachment option right here now in order to add the attachments you can of course double click here and add and choose to add attachments and such the picture and then choose OK that's one way to do it or the other way to do this would be if we created here a new form so if we go here under form and under customers we add all these fields next next finish we should have in here a field for the picture so let's say for customer Owen here we want to add his picture notice we click on it and notice here it says manage attachments you can click on it click on add and then go and find the picture click OK and there is the picture so that's how you add attachments to an existing table by adding the field first and then by creating the form next you can also customize an existing form with an attachment field 
by editing and using the design view and the layout view. If you made it this far in the tutorial, thank you for doing so. I hope that this tutorial was beneficial to you and that uh, you can go ahead and check out also the other tutorials that I have on this channel.